But what I'm going to talk about here is ways that you can adapt to any race distance in a really quick period of time with, and here's the key, this is going to be without burning out and without hitting a plateau. Hey there, it is, what day is it today? Tuesday. I think it's Tuesday. Time just goes zoom these days. Uh, hey there. So today, what we're going to talk about, this will be a brief live for you. We're going to talk about two things that really move the needle for you in your running. Now, when you're looking at ways to improve your running, you might think you want to run more or run long runs or do hard workouts or change your nutrition or all these things. Yep. And they're all good ideas. You really want to dial in as much as you can. And there are some things that move the needle for you a lot in a short period of time, like a specific workout. So, you know, if, you, if you're if you going to run a marathon and you want to run a marathon in four hours, whatever it is, and all you've done is really slow, easy runs, and you go out and you do a couple of runs at marathon pace, well, that's a good way to get better really quickly because you're going to adapt. But what I'm going to talk about here is ways that you can adapt to any race distance in a really quick period of time with, and here's the key, this is going to be without burning out and without hitting a plateau. So if you start doing hard workouts uh, on, on the track, hard tempo runs, you can only do so many before you're going to maybe get injured or just going to plateau. You'll get better and then you won't get as much better and then you won't get as much better until you're kind of just plateaued at a level of fitness and you're not going to keep going. So how can you level up your fitness consistently, not plateau, not get injured and have the work that you're putting in, you know, transfer from everything from the one mile to the ultra marathon. So here they are. Here are the two things. Number one is, well, hold on before I, I tell you, cause you already know what they are. They're sleep and their strides. Easy. Boom. Done. We're done with our life. We could be, but I'm going to tell you why. And I'm going to give you a little bit of, uh, my personal experience in the last couple of weeks. So normally I do these dressed in my regular clothes. I'm in my running clothes now. This is my buff that I was out running in the cold weather in. And I feel great because I ran my workout this morning and I'm gonna run again in a couple of hours. And I don't often run doubles, but when I feel really good and things are going really well, yeah, I'll throw in a small run in the evening just because it feels good. And I'm gonna share with you how, just personally, I've leveled up my training so much in the last just couple of weeks. Now here it is. Okay. Number one is we all love to talk about mileage as runners, right? What's your miles per week? Uh, how are you, how are your miles per week compared with last year? Uh, what are elite runners doing versus novice runners? And we kind of get hyper-focused on upping our mileage. Now I am not a proponent of using mileage as the key determining factor of how well you're going to race. And there's, there's lots of reasons for this, but the main reason is that your mileage is, is not as correlated with your performance as you might think. And in fact, if you've been running for a long time and your mileage is changing not that much, then your mileage is only correlated with your performance about 18%. Now that's crazy. Over a long term, over years, then your mileage would have a higher correlation. But in a given season and in a given month leading up to a race, nah, nope, you wouldn't have to change your mileage that much. But mileage really plays, really can move the needle for you if you can increase your mileage and then maintain it for a long time and then increase it again, okay? Now, that's simple, it's easy to just say, but if you go out and you try to increase your mileage, say you're running 30 miles a week and you try to increase it to 60 miles a week, that's a big level up. And if you do that, your injury risk goes sky high. And so you're not gonna be able to, most people aren't gonna be able to maintain that before they're gonna have to bump it back down, otherwise they'll burn out or they'll get injured. Okay, now there is an exception, and that is if you really focus on your sleep. So when it comes to recovery, I want you to think of your running recovery, not as running less. So if you do a really hard week or a big race, instead of running less afterwards to recover, you can also think of it as sleeping more to recover, sleeping more. Now I learned this, this way of kind of thinking about recovery from Michael Arnstein, who's uh, a former ultra runner, but who was really good. You know, he's winning some of the bigger hundred milers around the country. He's, uh, he's logging huge mileage, 200 plus miles per week. And he, he trains full volume all the way up to a race. So he might still run 200 miles in a week leading up to 
a hundred mile race, which is like nuts. Most people would be tapering. And the reason he's able to do that, part of the reason is because he just sleeps a lot. And so personally with me, I decided to, um, that I'm feeling really good. I want to up my mileage. So in the, in the last just few weeks, uh, I ran almost 80 miles, uh, just shy. I ran 80 miles in eight days. I took one day off. So average is about 70 miles per week. Right. Uh, and I've been doing that for a couple weeks now, but if you rewind to just, I don't know, the beginning of this year, six weeks ago, uh, I was probably averaging 40 miles per week and I would do long runs. I'd do some long runs that were 20, 25 miles or something. So I had the, the ability to level up my, my volume. But in most cases, if you level up your volume from 40 to, to 70 or 80 like that, uh, you're going to get tired. You're going to get hurt. Things like that are going to happen. But I leveled up my sleep. So I sleep at least nine hours every night. Almost every single night I'm getting nine. Uh, eight and a half would be on the lower end, on the lower spectrum. And what happened was over the last couple of weeks, there's been a couple nights, maybe two nights out of the week where I sleep 10 and a half hours. So it's nine, 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 and then whew, I'll sleep 10 to 10 and a half. And as long as I'm doing that and my nutrition is going really well, it seems like there's no limit to how much you can train if you just have the time to sleep enough. Now I understand you may not have the time to sleep 10 and a half hours or so. It's not that I just like have all this free time to do it. I just prioritize. And so I cut other, other things out. Like I cut out TV or, you know, work more efficiently or whatever it is in order to make the time. Cause if you need to find an extra hour in the day, you can probably do it. So I want to just share with you, you can level up your volume of training, uh, rap pretty rapidly as long as you you also rapidly level up your um, your sleep. Okay, so keep that in mind. You can also just go way more slowly with ramping up your mileage. You can do that and keep your sleep kind of the same and it'll take you months and months and months to double your mileage or you can do it in a relatively short period of time, maybe half the time, as long as you double down on your sleep. Uh, Nutrition is more important, but then sleep, okay? So I wanted to share that with you. Never thought of sleep like that before. Awesome, yep. Um, Keep this as a mantra in your head. Recovery is about sleeping more, not running less. I'll say it a couple times. Recovery is about, think about this intuitively. Recovery, does it make sense to you? How do you recover? Do you recover just by walking around and randomly recovering throughout the day? Or do you recover because you went to sleep and your body got to repair itself and not move and you know repair tissue and um, eliminate waste products and... You know, does it make sense just intuitively? Think about that. Now, most people are underslept. Uh, most people sleep seven hours per night or less. And I think a lot of people like to like to say that they sleep even less. If you poll, pe- uh, uh, you know, 100 people, you're likely going to get a lot of people saying that they sleep. Oh, I only need four hours. I only need six hours. And um, at least the research that I've read on this is that it's underreported. People are actually sleeping a little more than they claim because it, it kind of like gives a social status to say, I only sleep three hours a night. People are like, wow, that's amazing. And you still get stuff done. It kind of like inflates. So I'm not sure we can take, take it at face value. Um, but seven hours is still not enough. And if you look at the sleep research, especially go ahead and look up, um, there's a couple of really great videos you can find on YouTube by Daniel Pink, P I N K on sleep. And, um, it's a good place to start. Uh, seven is not enough. Uh, nine and nine is really good. 10 and a half if you're training really hard. Okay. Now moving on. Number two, number two is strides, strides. So let's define a stride first. Strides are running at a here. I'm going to define it two different ways. It's running comfortably fast, not comfortably hard. Okay. Comfortably fast. Speed is the component here for a very short duration of time. And so this might look something like, if, I'm going to turn sideways here. If you're running nice and easy, you might look kind of like you're smiling and just going along. And as you start to go faster and faster, eventually you're going to be sprinting and your face is going to tighten up and your hands are going to clench and your shoulders are going to, and you're going to be sprinting, right? Now, if you back off just enough to where you're relaxed again, back the pace off to where you're going fast, but you're relaxed. Okay. Fast, but relaxed maybe somewhere around mile race pace or so. If, you, if you're running about that pace, but you're only doing it for 50 meters, 100 meters, maybe 200 meters, 
not more than that. Only 100 meters or so, <coughs> excuse me, at a time. Then, is your fatigue level going to be high or low? You run at about mile race pace for 100 meters. You're not sucking wind. It's easy. You take a break, you do it again. Take a break, do it again. Take a break, do it again. Maybe you rack up 10 or 20 of these in a run. Now, when you did that, let's say you ran 100 meters and you did it 20 times and you took uh, a minute between. You don't even need that. Maybe 30 seconds between. You just ra racked up 2,000 meters. Hear this, okay? This is very important. You just racked up 2,000 meters, which is five laps on a track, of mile pace running. And you did it in a way that it felt very easy. You weren't out of breath. You didn't have to redline it. You're not burned out. It's pretty awesome. In other words, you got more training injected into your legs than you could have had you raced, gone on the track and raced a mile. You got five laps worth of running at four lap race pace. That's better than, from a muscular point of view, it's better than racing a mile. And you can do that almost every day. You can do it every other day for sure. And this is in fact, I put a post in here last week, uh, Ken Anissa Bekele, one of the greatest distance runners of all time. Uh, until very recently, he was the world record holder in the 5K and the 10K and only two seconds off of the world record in the marathon. This guy's really good. He's training for the 2021 Olympics right now. Officially the 2020 Olympics. The medals are still going to say 2020, by the way. But of course, we're in 2021. And his training right now is, well, he runs a lot of miles, about 120 miles a week. Let me ask you, just, let's pause there. Do you think he sleeps a lot? Do you think he even naps during the day? Just what do you think if you're going to run 120 miles a week? How important is sleep to a guy like this? All right. Then he's doing two quality runs per week, a long run and a tempo interval run. Okay. Take those out. Take those out of the equation just momentarily. And the rest of his week is easy running with strides. He does 30 100 meter strides four times per week. Okay. Hear this. This is a guy who is basically the fastest marathoner on the planet, training for an Olympic gold contention in just a few months. And the way he's training is running a lot of volume, sleeping a lot, and doing tons and tons and tons and tons. Almost two miles a day worth of four minute mile pace running. So he does his 100 meter strides in about 15 seconds, four minute mile pace. Not even mile, pay, mile race pace for him because he can race it in about 345. So, for, so he's getting almost two miles worth of roughly two mile race pace running. That's like running a two mile race every other day, but doing it in a way that's easy. It's not taxing him. This is really important for leveling up your speed. So I'll conclude with this. The other thing that I've been doing in my training, um, upping my mileage, sleeping a lot, but also strides. And I do them three to four times per week. I do 10 to 15 hundred meter strides. Yesterday I did six 200 meter strides. And the effect is, uh, is really fast. So I did, let's say I did a, a two mile, kind of like little time trial, nothing serious about uh, a month ago, five weeks ago, perhaps on the stretch of road. And I did it in uh, 1206. And I wasn't like redlining it, but I was going pretty fast. It was, you know, nothing crazy. Just go out there and just move the legs and see what I do. I came back just uh, three, less than three weeks later, and I wasn't trying any harder. And I did the same stretch of road and I did it in 1127, 1127. Okay, that's a huge improvement in just a few weeks. And I'm attributing that. I'm not doing workouts. I'm not doing track workouts. Not now. I'm training for ultras. I'm not doing track workouts now. I'm doing just lots of strides. Strides, strides, strides. All day, baby. And that was weeks ago. I bet you if I go out right now, I'd, I'd go at least 20 seconds faster. You just get so, so much faster. Okay, now the beauty of this, and this is the final thing I'll say, is the beauty of adding in strides is that you're not going to burn out. If you go out and you're hammering... 12 by 400, like fast, and you're really sucking wind. Or if you're doing mile repeats or 5K races as your speed work, even if you're a marathoner, if you're doing that, how many of those can you do? Can you really race a 5K even every week consistently? Can you really race um, a half marathon or 
a mile even, can you even race any distance every week consistently before you start to really start to peak and then you're going to plateau? Nobody does this. Like even elite runners don't, you don't race every week. It's not a good way to train. So by doing strides, you get to accumulate, you just get to accumulate, 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 accumulate this massive reservoir of fast running in your legs while not taxing uh, not as much taxing your aerobic or even your anaerobic systems. You're, you're using your ATP creatine phosphate system chiefly for something short like that. And uh, so you're going to develop the musculature, which is really important. The musculature supersedes this more important than the metabolic systems. You can have a really healthy heart, really healthy lungs, great VO2 max, but if you don't train the muscles to run a marathon, you're not going to do very well. If you train your muscles really well, you'll be able to achieve a lot. So I'll leave you guys with that. Uh, if, if you up your mileage, you can actually do it relatively quickly, relatively quickly. Okay. I'm not saying don't go out and double your miles, but if you were to go out and double your miles, you'd better start sleeping a heck of a lot to have a chance of not getting injured. Okay. So just weigh the pros and cons there. And um, if, if nothing else, certainly when you're starting to train more, training harder, do not skimp on sleep. I know everybody tells you that, but do you do it? A lot of people just, myself included, we, sometimes it ju you just stay up later than you know is good, than you want to, ah, just because it feels good. Stop that. <laughs> At least stop that when you're, when you're in your peak training, okay? And number two, no matter where you are in your training, you can always add in strides. You can add it in during your base training. You can add it in during your support training. You can add it off season. You, you can add it in your specific training, but hopefully by the time you get to your specific training for your event, uh, you've already done some of that speed work. If you haven't, well then you're not really in specific training and, you, and the thing, the low hanging fruit is actually to add in strides. So at any point, if you're not doing strides, add them in. Hey, if you like that video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And the best way to give back is to take the link for this video and send it to just one of your friends. It really helps us grow. We appreciate it. Thank you. We'll see you on the next video.